Inspire, connect, and enable the ecosystem of entrepreneurs. Welcome to Hubcast by Impact Hub Lagos, a podcast for the Nigerian innovator, change maker, and entrepreneur. In each episode, we will bring to you exciting and inspiring content where we will share knowledge, insights, opportunities, and real innovative stories from the Impact Hub Lagos community. As a bloodline of our economies, entrepreneurs need to be supported and given every opportunity and resource to succeed. It is our mission to empower you from intention to impact. This week, we discuss navigating workplace dynamics with Gen Zs versus Millennials with Damilola Layade. He's a seasoned professional with a career spanning marketing communications, business development, and digital strategy. Damilola is currently taking the reins as CEO at Glover App. He previously served as the head of strategy and partnerships at Patricia Technologies. And he's a stellar professional. And words can't describe how excited we are to have him on Hopcast. Welcome to episode 18 of Impact Hub Lagos's Hubcast. I remain your host, Anita Abakoba. How are you keeping today? So with me today here in the Africa Business Radio Studio, I have an amazing guest. CEO, Glover App, Damilola Layode. Hi, Damilola. Hello, Anita. <laughs> Welcome to Hubcast. Thank you for having me on the show. Great. Thank you so much for taking our time to join us today. I'm really excited about today's conversation because this is a, <laughs> it's an interesting topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I hope you are as well. <laughs> uh, but before we segue into today's topic, please do us the honor, Sam Lola. Tell us about yourself and your journey so far career wise. Thank you very much. My name is Damilayode. Damilola Layode. Currently, I work with Glover App. Overall, I've had a career in marketing and comms. That's to loosely put it. Mm-hmm. But leading with content strategy, of course. But the last few years of my life, I've focused on working within the tech ecosystem, helping products and businesses attain growth and scale. Okay, great. That's a very... How do I put it? Very humble way (laughs) (laughs) to summarize your experience so far. But yes, so working in the tech ecosystem, and we do know that the tech ecosystem is the backbone of the tech ecosystem is in the human resources, right? So we have all these young people, young, vibrant resources working within the tech ecosystem. And there is this conversation. Yes, there's this, there's always this bone of contention around, oh, you know, we have young people from a certain age to another age bracket, and this is how their attitude to work is. And, uh, you know, we have the probably like boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, and all those wonderful letters that we assign to, to things. So today's topic is workplace dynamics with Gen Z's versus millennials. So in your own understanding, what would you consider Gen Zs or millennials? Oh, okay. Thankfully, we had the clarification with your producer before we started. (laughs) thanks. So now I know um, Gen Zs are 97 till 2010. Mm. Prior to now, I thought it was uh, mid-90s. That was Mm. 95 till 2010. So I was mistaking millennials for Gen Zs. And we now know... Millennials are from 81 till 96. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So overall, I think I would have a bias for millennials because like I said earlier, mm-hmm. my boss, the chairman of the board of the company mm-hmm. I run, mm-hmm. is a millennial. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. So maybe I'm team millennial, so I don't get some flack. <laughs> All right. Before we go forward, what again do you identify as? Oh, I'm a Gen X, I oh. believe. Okay. I'm 36 years old. All right. Born in 86. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe Ronke would want to clarify in <laughs> case I am not 
<laughs> and I've been thinking I am. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, you can be Gen Z at heart if you want, or even millennial at heart if if that's the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. If that's the case, I that's... think I like the millennial energy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you on that one. I agree with you on that one. And there are several schools of thoughts in terms of like what age bracket is which one, but there are always certain characteristics that people ascribe to one group or the other. But just as you've mentioned, you said your boss is a millennial. So how would you say working has been with a millennial? Yeah, a millennial compared to Gen Z. In a leadership role? Okay, so mm-hmm. I think the first thing would be I doubt that stereotypes would be accurate. I'll mm-hmm. start by saying that that's mm-hmm. my disclaimer. Mm-hmm. When trying to define a certain data set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. group of people or whatnot because other factors come to play okay. in defining value principle character individual mm-hmm. across board mm-hmm. so having said that from i would say what draws me most to millennials would be their candor their can-do spirit mm-hmm. and their sense for adventure i think millennials are daring so whilst you might try to say um, these energies are uncontrollable and I still feel they get what the bottom line is mm-hmm. or what the most important metrics are. Mm-hmm. And so they channel their energy accordingly. Mm-hmm. For Gen Z's, I can't say much from a leadership perspective because I haven't had the pleasure of working with a Gen Z in leadership mm-hmm. capacity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I might not be able to say much about, about Gen Z's, but on the whole, because they are digital natives, mm-hmm. to a large extent, they get it. But also working with them in other capacities, mm-hmm. I think the missing link is the big picture, I think. Mm. So you have people that have um, skill sets, specializations. I mean, these things come to them naturally. Mm. They're coding mm-hmm. and all of that. But what might be missing would be the, and this is not a generalization, would be that big picture mentality. I think Gen Z's compared to millennials might be a bit behind in that regard, mm. if you ask me. Mm. Okay, so seeing the big picture, you'd say that millennials are more likely to look at things from that perspective on like Gen Z's that are a bit shorter with their attention span. Yeah, let me try and give you a perspective. Yeah, please go ahead. So you're touching on some component of it, but okay, so this, I never thought of this prior to now, but I mean, Mm -hmm. just incubating the questions you've asked Mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. And you might think that Millennials get it because in their most impressionable stages of their lives, Mm -hmm. they were able to witness Sergei from Google Mm -hmm. do it, Mm -hmm. see uh, Mark Wahlberg. I don't know if you understand. So from that point, you can say that they are more clued into the big picture because They've seen young people like themselves emerge Mm -hmm. and then take it all the way. Mm -hmm. Whereas for Gen Z's, they've come of age at a period where the ecosystem is booming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of value to be accrued from. And so maybe they miss out on historic perspective, if I may say. So they read books and all of that. So you can try to catch up with history if they do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I mean, if they are clueless about music from 2000s, how much more? How much more? (laughs) I don't know if you get it. So so maybe that historic perspective is missing. Mm -hmm. To see um, an industry dominated by the older folks. Like prior to the emergence of these new leaders, you had the likes of Bill Gates, who was what? Maybe 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Your guy from Tesla, Ellen. 52, mm-hmm. thereabouts. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And then the next phase is going to skip two generations mm -hmm. and then land on. So maybe that might have played mm -hmm. in someone like uh, Hano trying to build Africa's largest crypto exchange. Or, I don't know if you get it. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. any of the other guys doing amazing stuff. And you find out that some of the most amazing products in the market right now are millennials mm -hmm, mm -hmm. read one of Laleria at Lemonade Finance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is what? 89 baby mm -hmm. it falls within the millennial bracket no? yeah yeah we would say that I think it's interesting that perspective you have where you say like you know in terms of the emergence of innovation and stuff like it skips certain generations before it hits yeah. uh, others so would you say because there's often this belief that millennials are scared of Gen Zs. <laughs> Would you say that is mm, that is true? Maybe not. Millennials are not scared. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like that particular part of it, or maybe they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but what would be the the rationale the rationale the behind the fear mm. is it a fear of competition i doubt that or more like a fear of seeing what they've brought together being unraveled mm. really can't say because i mean accountability at the end of the day you never do anything great without discipline mm. and as far as <laughs> As far as a certain group is concerned. <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Thank you so much for those insights. I would say, knowing all of this, if you own the startup of your own and you needed to hire a CEO, would you go with? Definitely a millennial. Okay. Why? Um, I think they are more stable. Okay. Um, they can commit mm -hmm. to project more. Long, if if it were to be long term, mm -hmm. um, you hinted earlier on about Gen Z's having issues with attention. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it goes into the career as well. Mm. Um, maybe it would be hard to find because it's a gig economy these days. Yeah, um, you might not be able to find a Gen Z who's worked at a particular establishment for maybe twenty four months. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we don't have them. Sure. You would have them, but will they be able to commit to the project long term? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to hire a CEO and then be in the market for another CEO maybe 12 months after because line. he's gotten a better gig. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, that would be my primary continuity, first of all. Yeah. Of course, for you to be under consideration, you would have ticked off all of the pertinent values or characteristics required for the role mm -hmm. but then maybe the softer considerations or strategic consideration if i may mm -hmm. okay so consistency really yeah consistency and the ability to commit is what you know differentiates millennials from gen z's in taking up a leadership role so with all this being said, and you know, like you've mentioned, it's a gig economy now. And then there's uh, all these concepts. It's work from home. It's we're talking youth employment or un unemployment as the case may be. And, you know, Gen Z's kind of having like a shorter attention span <laughs> than and commitment than millennials and the rest. What do you think both generations can do better in terms of working together in a workplace interesting one i think we need to turn down the ego in the room mm. a whole lot mm. everyone's a brilliant mind and amazing mm -hmm. so less ego more collaboration i would say mm -hmm. I mean, maybe your question about millennials being scared of Gen Z is not unfounded, mm -hmm. which can maybe explain why there might be some maybe breach mm -hmm. in collaboration. Yeah. But I feel like the most 
the important thing, like you said about iHub, mm-hmm. is collaboration. Yeah. Like nobody builds anything worthy in isolation. Exactly. Um, that's the most important part. And the greatest enemy to collaboration on the flip side is ego. Mm-hmm. Cause that's the only reason why you would not want to hear the other party out, take mm-hmm. on board whatever it is that is being shared, mm-hmm. and then making the most out of it. All right, all right. So toning the ego in the room down and collaboration. And yes, of course, you just reechoed for us here at Impact Hub Lagos. We have a saying that um, impact cannot happen in isolation. It requires collective and collaborative action. So regardless, 100. yeah. So regardless of what generation it is, if it's the baby boomers, Z, X, Y, whatever, A, B, exactly, whatever <laughs> letter it is, collaborate and, you know, be teachable and be ready to, you know, to learn as well. But collaboration Learning course, never ends. It, at all. And uh, collaboration is key. So, I think this leads me to my final question for today. And that would be, if you were a Gen Z right now, or if you were millennial, (laughs) what would you do differently? I would read more. Okay. Okay. So, the value of knowledge Mm -hmm. can only be quantified in how far you can go, I think. Mm-hmm. with whatever it is you apply it to. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have people that can build but can't scale. Mm-hmm. You have people that can scale because maybe they have maybe some extra knowledge. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you get to a stage in your career and then you are proficient at products and that is what has led you up all the way. But then you are going to play to product-wise because what is required for the next level requires a bit more than product. Mm-hmm. So how do you get your broad perspective? Also because uh, the landscape keeps changing mm-hmm. and the goalpost keeps moving. You have to stay abreast. We are here to conclude or to attain the SDGs mm-hmm. and we have the ECGs, mm-hmm. which is not to say that you should not be aware. Yeah. So everything is fluid now and knowledge. So information used to be key, but now we have an information overload mm. and because of that a lot of dead noise yeah. so many things being said but discernment of what is valuable to hold on to mm-hmm. is required mm-hmm. uh, but what won't fail is the books because if someone is going to take a few months to put their thoughts into writing mm-hmm. not a few minutes mm-hmm. in the form of a tweet not a tweet or yeah <laughs> or a caption mm-hmm. then definitely they would at least try to do one better by putting in some form of research. Yeah. And guess what? People need to go to the glossary section and check the references for Mm -hmm. materials that were used in books. That is where the gems are. Mm. So, having said that, I would read more books. If you were a Gen Z. And if you were a millennial, millennial. what would... Or a millennial. So, Yeah. yeah. Across board. Across board, of course. Because like you said, learning never ends. And the value, there's so much dead noise, like you've said. So just holding on to what matters requires you to open your mind and then seek out concrete, concise information that only exists in well-researched and well-thought-out data out there. Thank you so, so much, Damilola. This has been an amazing conversation. I hope it has Short been. Short and sweet, yeah. <laughs> it has been I, for I've you learned as a well. few okay. that I'm going to take back now and apply with you guys. <laughs> same with. here. Same here. Same here. Same here. It's really been insightful. Thank you so much. Thank once you again, much once again, we've been speaking with Damilola Layote, CEO, Glover App. And I hope you've taken at least one or two things out of today's conversation. And regardless of what you identify as Gen Z, Gen Y, A, H, whatever letter it is, I hope today's conversation has been of value to you. And as we always say here at Impact Hub Lagos Hubcast, stay inspired 
keep connecting and keep making impact.